The largest software companies in the world use monorepos, but historically, adopting a monorepo for anything other than Facebook or Google scale was difficult and time consuming. Turbo Repo, a high performance build system, takes the lessons from the giants of the web and brings it to open source for every developer. And it's being used by some incredible companies. It abstracts the complex configuration needed for monorepos and provides fast incremental builds with zero configuration remote caching. Let's take a look. We'll start by running Create Turbo to set up a new Turbo Repo with two Next.js apps, a shared component library, and shared configuration for ESLint and TypeScript. Let's change into our Turbo Repo directory and we can set up remote caching for our Turbo Repo. We'll log into Vercel using the Turbo Repo CLI, and this will allow us to link our Vercel remote cache to our project with zero configuration. So we'll accept and say, yes, we would like to enable remote caching, and I'll pick a team that I would like to use my remote cache for. In this case, I'll use Vercel examples. Okay, so let's run a build and see Turbo Repo in action. You'll see that there's a cache miss for the docs build as well as the web build. And at the end of the build process, you'll see that both tasks were completed and two of them were not cached. However, on the rerun of our build, both of the results were cached and it was instant. Now, normally this cache lives on the same machine executing the command. However, with remote caching, you can share the Turbo Repo cache across your entire team and CI resulting in even faster builds and days of time saved. For example, let's delete our local cache inside node modules and then rerun our build. You'll notice that it's much faster on the first run since it was able to download the previously cached results from our remote cache, even if they weren't available locally. Our Turbo Repo has two main apps, web and docs. Let's change into the pages directory for our docs application and edit our index route. We'll update the H1 that says docs and add some exclamation points and save our file. Then we can change back into our root directory and rerun the build command. Since we didn't make any edits to our web application, you'll see it says cache hit replaying output. However, we did edit docs, so we only cached one out of two packages. If we rerun our build, you'll see that both are cached, both locally and in the cloud. Now let's deploy our docs application to Vercel. I've pushed up my local Git repository to GitHub and Vercel automatically recognizes this new repo. I'll change the framework to Next.js and I'll update the root directory to reflect my local application structure. So I want the docs folder in this instance. Then I'll override the build command to tell Vercel to only look at the scope of the docs folder and run Turbo during the build process. That's it. Now we can hit deploy and deploy our docs application to Vercel. And we're done. It looks like in about 15 seconds, we were able to deploy our docs application to Vercel. If we expand the building section, we can see that initially the build cache for dependencies was not found. So it has to download these from NPM. However, we do see there was a cache hit from the remote cache for the output that we had already previously generated locally, which means that we were able to build this application in about 900 milliseconds. Going back to my local environment, we can make another change to our docs project by editing the index page and adding some more exclamation marks to our file. We can save that, add those changes to Git, add a new commit, and push that commit up to our origin. Vercel will recognize that we push this commit and automatically kick off a build. Inspecting this subsequent build, we see that the build cache for dependencies was downloaded, and there was a cache miss since we modified the code inside docs. Our output shows the result was not cached, so this will be uploaded and stored to the Vercel remote cache. Back in our local environment, we can remove our local cache and rerun the build. And you'll notice this was really fast. And that's because the build that just ran in our CI that rebuilt our docs can be downloaded from the remote cache on our local machine. You'll also notice that the web build cache was also downloaded and reused because it did not change.
That's the magic and power of remote caching. One final note is in the Vercel dashboard on the usage tab, you can see information about your remote caching usage on Vercel, including the amount of time that you've saved thanks to remotely cached artifacts, the number of remotely cached artifacts, and finally, the total size of those remote cached artifacts.